Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, 20, uh, 28th uh, Wikidata Lab. Today, we will be uh, presenting a Wikidata Lab focused on uh, uh, metadata applications. And I'm here with uh, Lucas. I will introduce him uh, shortly. Let me uh, begin. So this uh, Wikidata Lab is um, an event promoted, organized by the Grupo de Usuarios Wikimovimento Brasil, the Wikimovimento Brasil user group, uh, the, the Museu Paulista, with a partnership with Fundação Banco do Brasil and with the support of the University of Sao Paulo and the uh, Foundation uh, to support the University of Sao Paulo, FUSP. Just... Who are we? I'm Eder, I'm a applied mathematician, a programmer, a designer, and a Wikimedian. Uh, are you all seeing my presentation? Yes. <laughs> uh, Lucas is a software developer and a Wikidata enthusiast. I will let him um, introduce him. Uh, it's uh, his himself uh, later on. And we uh, are the are some kind of uh, of tech uh, Wikimedians. So this is why we are presenting this Wikidata Lab. So the Wikidata Lab we are planning to do uh, involves all the Wikimedia projects and uh, a space, uh, a service that is called ToolForge. That is where the applications, the metadata and other applications are uh, stored and maintained. <coughs> so what are metadata applications? So, um, let me uh, make an introduction. Uh, the Wikidata, the project Wikidata, works as a hub of linked open uh, data for GLAM institutions for a long time now. And the release and retrievement of metadata, the, the going and, and uh, going back of the journey of the metadata released by these uh, GLAM institutions uh, into and from the project, the Wikidata project, is beneficial for the Wikimedia uh, community because it uh, helps us uh, improve our co uh, the content on many projects. First, uh, for example, metadata about um, works of art that have um, Wikipedia articles in multiple languages, that this metadata can be used in info boxes and in the construction of the article itself and the images provided by these institutions can be used uh, and reused everywhere because they are in um, open license, uh, copyleft uh, license, assisted by. It's also uh, beneficial for the general public that has access to the the contents, the, the collections of these institutions. Uh, for example, in our case, uh, bringing uh, to a light to Brazil, the Museu Paulista has been closed for several years now, and the collection is available, uh, part of the collection is available on the Wikimedia projects, and this uh, has a, a big impact in the visualization of these uh, objects and works of art. And not uh, the last, but not, not the less important, for the institutions themselves. Because um, once you release your metadata into um, the Wikimedia projects, you have a, a, a lot of people working and collaboratively working uh, or contributing with these metadata and these images and these categorizations of images to <clears throat> uh, enrich the metadata and the, the images, the media files 
uh, provided by the institutions. And this can go back to the institution. So the institution uh, uses and uh, the work of um, other people, volunteers, Wikimedia users to enrich their metadata. Uh, I think I covered the three points by publishing metadata into Wikidata along with media files into Wikimedia Commons, GLAM institutions open their collections to new ways of engaging their audience. So one of the ways to engage their audience is using tools or our, our applications, apps. Um, the use of tools is one effective way of engaging people that are already willing to enhance the institution's content. Art lovers, topic experts, for example, if we had we have um, Santos Dumont collection that has some uh, plain uh, plan uh, uh, parts and a lot of objects that um, only a topic expert can uh, note. Though this is a model of this uh, this plane or this is a, a, a tool used in this type of uh, uh, activity. <clears throat> such, such tools are not limited to just GLAM institutions. So uh, of course the, the focus is, uh, my focus is on uh, GLAM institutions, um, but they are not limited to just GLAM institutions. They, they can be expanded to all the Wikimedia projects and uh, for the beneficial of the Wikimedia projects themselves. So, uh, for example, if I want to create a tool that will uh, help realize uh, or will help um, a new user to make uh, an article with uh, a structure, a structured uh, uh, article, then like uh, Mbabel, for example, uh, is a tool uh, that I can build to make the work that people are, will uh, be doing easier. <clears throat> because the motivation to improve content is inherent to the Wikimedia communities. So we we all want to improve the contents that we are uh, passionate about. <clears throat> now, Lucas will uh, present some tools he has created, his motivations, the process of creation of these tools, and so some good practice to follow and introduce himself. Let me just... Yes. Okay. Obrigado. Boa tarde. Eu me chamo Lucas e eu não posso falar português muito bem, então eu só vou uh, falar em inglês. Sinto muito. So, hi. Uh, I'm Lucas. I have built several tools and I hope that I can tell you some useful things about how that goes. And if you have any questions, uh, write them in the chat and I think I will be able to see them here on the side. Um, but let's start uh, with the first tool I wrote, which is called Wikidata Mass Message, um, which came out of uh, some requirement at Wikimedia Germany. Uh, so this tool allows you to send a message to every page that is linked to, say, the technical village pump on each Wikipedia. But if the technical village pump doesn't exist, then it falls back to the normal village pump or the project chat or whatever it's called on that wiki. And so that's a useful tool for uh, community managers or other people who need to send these mass messages a lot. And that was the first tool I wrote. And Amir had mentioned this page uh, that I linked there, my first Flask Award tool. Um, not sure if you can see my mouse. You can if I do it on the right screen. Um, which basically walks you through starting a tool and um, taught me the beginnings of how to do that. and um so that was the first tool and i eventually found out uh 
I started out by writing this tool directly on Wikimedia Toolforge, which meant that each time I made a change to the source code of the tool, then I had to run this web service restart command down there and then wait like 10, 15 seconds until it had started up again. And then I could press refresh in the browser and see, oh, I made a stupid error, fix that in the file, uh, web service restart, wait 10 seconds, and then try it out again in the browser and see, oh, now it's not working for a different reason. I made some other mistake, fix it again, web service restart 10 seconds, and it takes a long time. And eventually I learned you don't have to do it like this. There are way better ways to work on tools so you can um, so when you are running the tool at the end, you're hosting it on Wikimedia to Toolforge, which is the platform that Wikimedia gives you. And there, um, the tool runs and you don't have to pay anything for it. And it's, uh, everyone in the world can access it and it's very convenient. But if you're working on the tool and still writing it, then it's a lot more useful to run it locally on your own computer. Um, and then that's just um, more convenient. And also, if you're using this uh, Flask framework here, this has an extremely cool uh, debugging mode where if you change anything in the source code, it will immediately recognize you've changed this file. It will restart the whole uh, tool process automatically and you can immediately see the change in the browser. And if something goes wrong, it even shows you the error message in the browser and gives you an interactive console um, I'm not sure if I can sell this well, but if you actually use it yourself, it's it's extremely amazing. This was totally mind blowing when I found out. I don't remember who told me this, but um, going from waiting 15 seconds after each code change to doing this locally was absolutely amazing. Um, so that's what I kind of learned from this first tool. And then the first tool I built as a volunteer and which is a lot more useful is this Wikidata Lexeme forms. So Wikidata has been collecting lexicographical data for a while, which means data about different words, such as in the screenshot, um, I think that hand went to the wrong direction. Uh, adjectives in Portuguese, they have these forms, masculine, feminine, singular, plural, uh, superlative, diminutive, and augmentative. Yeah. Um, and if you were to add all of those forms manually, you would have to click the form or you have to go to Wikidata and click the button, add a new form and enter the right item IDs for singular, masculine, enter the text, um, save that, add the next form, singular, feminine, write in the form, blah, 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 and it takes ages. And so I thought, uh, couldn't we do something simpler? Because like all Portuguese adjectives or all German nouns or whatever are going to have the same set of forms. In this case, the same set of, what is this? 16 forms, I think, and it's always going to use the same 16 items for singular, masculine, singular, feminine, plural, masculine, and so on. And I kind of had in mind these uh, declension tables that you would see when learning uh, Latin or some other language in Latin that's hic, hec, hoc, huius, 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 and I don't remember the rest. Um, but you have this table, this scheme where the uh, forms are always the same, and then you just have to put the text in there and then I tried to build the tool and had to abandon the table idea. And instead you have in the screenshot, you can see it, this uh, list where each form is used in a sentence. So you can see um, how it's used actually. And uh, so that allows you to create like seams and the required forms very quickly. And this tool has been a pretty uh, big success. I think it took a little while uh, maybe a bit longer actually to get this process worked out how people can contribute because I could not have told you that Portuguese adjectives have all of these 16 forms. I'm not sure I've ever seen this augmentative form before. Uh, so I got help there from people who actually speak Portuguese better than I do and got help from people who speak Arabic and Hindi and Japanese and whatever. And the process for letting these people contribute what they know on a wiki page and then turning it into the source code of the tool. That took a little while to figure out, but overall this has been pretty useful. Um, next tool I wanted to talk about is maybe the main one um, that actually falls into this category of metadata applications. So I'm not sure if you can see that in the screenshot or if I need to make that 
not sure if I can make it larger, but there's this um, smaller part in the screenshot of this collection of statements on Wikidata. Uh, so this is an item about the photograph situation room. Um, and the photograph depicts the situation room itself, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and so on. And it has this qualifier there, relative position within the image. And for like Joe Biden, it's the qualifier reads PCT for percent 1.8 comma 30.7 comma 16.3 comma 29 28.9, which means that this the area where Joe Biden is depicted within this image starts at what is it 1.8 percent from the left and 30 percent. 30.7% from the top, and it is 16.3% wide. So that's all those numbers in there. And so this data existed for a while, and I woke up for some reason one Saturday morning thinking about this qualifier and how it was basically useless because you look at those numbers and that doesn't tell you anything. And I thought, couldn't you write a tool which actually shows those um, qualifiers this data that's already there in the format that humans can look at and that's then what you see in the rest of the screenshot you have uh, here this rectangular area actually around Joe Biden which is the same data but now you can actually see it and then Barack Obama and all the other people so I just started writing this and by Sunday evening the first version was ready to announce and I put it on Twitter and also the Wikidata project chat and then um, people started I don't remember if I had planned this originally or if people just requested it, but um, pretty soon editing support was added. So you would draw an area with your mouse and then it adds the right qualifier um, to the statement. So it's not just a viewer anymore. It's also an editor of this metadata. Um, and then at some point, someone also asked about integration with this triple IF framework. Um, which I didn't really know that much about, but that is apparently a standard way to uh, represent metadata about an image. And so what the tool then does is um, kind of expose the information that we already have here um, in this standard triple IF format so that other tools can use it. And then it turns out there's already a tool which can take this information in the standard IIIF format and then show something pretty similar to this. And so you can plug that IIIF description into that tool and get a pretty similar view of the areas. And I didn't really need to bother adding this, but it's there anyways and maybe still useful. So that was initially added by someone called Tom Crane on Fabricator. And uh, as far as I know, that's already also been used by lots of people. I just don't really hear that much about it, I think. Um, I think that's all I have to say about Wikidata image positions. And at some point, I realized that I was copy pasting a lot of code between my tools um, and got the idea to start this thing, Cookie Cutter Tool Forge, which is a template to create tools, kind of. So you run it on your computer. And it asks you, what should the tool be called? What should be the URL of the tool? What's your username, by the way? Because we're going to use that as the documentation page. And I think a few other things it asks you. And then it spits out um, some boilerplate uh, Python code and HTML. And does it do CSS? I don't remember. Um, and then you can start by editing all of this. And it generates a lot of OAuth related code for you. So you can get started pretty soon with um, adding editing support to your tool. And it's just been very useful ever since then. And I don't need to copy paste that much code anymore. And some other people have also used this apparently and found it useful. So that's the cookie cutter tool forge thing. Um, I'm not sure if I would recommend it for your first tool. Uh, it's probably at least a good idea to also follow this my first Flask OAuth tool guide. Um, if you're starting out writing tools, and then maybe you can use this cookie cutter cut tool forge at the same time. But I think using them together is a good idea because at least at the beginning, I definitely started this cookie cutter tool forge uh, with the idea of, I know what I'm doing. I don't need long explanations of every step. I just want uh, to remove the repetitive work. And so it wasn't, at least originally, it wasn't built in mind with explaining 
how to do this from scratch if you don't have that much experience with it. Um, another tool that maybe demonstrates how I get started or why I start writing tools is quick categories. So I was visiting the Atelier Wikidata in Paris uh, back when in-person visits were still a thing and talked to user Harmonia Amanda and she said it would be really useful to have a tool like quick statements except for categories um, because uh, she was working with the categories of figure skaters on Wikimedia Commons and their trainers and um, that various events should be sorted into the right category for the people who participated there or the other way around, I don't remember. And uh, she was used from Wikidata to working with this tool called Quick Statements where you put in uh, almost like a spreadsheet describing all the edits you make and then you paste it into the tool and it makes all the edits and it's extremely convenient and there wasn't anything like that for categories. So I happened to have a week of vacation afterwards and so I used that to build this quick categories tool for uh, Harmonia Amanda initially and then many other people since then. And actually a few months later someone was visiting the Wikimedia Germany office for this Wikimedia Summit uh, and asked me, do you know if I can do uh, something related to categories? Uh, do you know how I could do that? And I, it was amazing. I had this idea of, wow, I just wrote this tool that you can absolutely use for this. Uh, let me see if we can make this work and uh, sat down, wrote some queries and it actually worked out. And I think it's now one of the most used tools on, what is it, Busk Wikipedia, I think. You can see it in the screenshot there. Um, but a lot of other people use it as well. So I guess that kind of brings me to the first uh, takeaway I wrote down here, which is that I write a lot of my tools either for myself or for some other person I know very well. And then if someone else finds them useful as well, that's great. Um, but I think it helps a lot to either yourself uh, use the tool or be in close contact with someone who will want to use it and then you know um, which direction you should go, how you should write the tool and even later when someone requests changes it's always a good idea to not just um, go ahead and do exactly what they wanted because maybe it doesn't work out but to be in kind of close conversation with them and say I'm not sure if I can do this, I'm not sure if this is possible, but what if I do this instead? And then they say, okay, yes, but only if you also add that. And then you kind of negotiate about what the tool should be or how it should develop and hopefully arrive at a useful form through that. Uh, what else did I write down here? Tests and other aut automatic assistants are very good to have. So I started out with writing no kind of automated tests or code style or anything with a tool and um, as a result the code wasn't very pretty and changing it I would sometimes accidentally break all sorts of things and so eventually I started writing automated tests so I can make a code change and then run all these tests automatically and it will tell me if everything is still working or if I broke something. Um, that's very useful and that's also integrated in the cookie cutter toolforge. Uh, but it is not enabled by default because I also noticed that uh, some other people just used Cookie Cutter Toolforge and uh, said yes, default to all the questions and then they ended up with tests and the tests were broken and they don't care. Uh, they don't need the tests that's, and that's absolutely fine for them, but then it would be better to not uh, generate the tests at all. And that's why then I changed the cookie cutter tool for it, so it's disabled by default and only if you actually want to use the tests and code style and everything else, then it includes that in all the things it generates. Um, something I also do a lot is um, try to write some documentation. Usually I make it a sub page of my user page, but if you want, you can also put it in the project namespace, like the Wikipedia namespace. Um, but somewhere there should be documentation about the tool by the time that you announce it, um, because that's more convenient than putting all the explanation of what is this tool, what does it do inside the announcement itself, and then also link to that documentation for the tool. Um, when people have problems with your tool, that can come through many ways. I don't really um, tell people which place they should use to send bug reports. Maybe that's 
part of why they come from all over the place. Um, but I kind of like bug reports over Twitter and Telegram, especially because of what I mentioned earlier, then you can go into this direct exchange with how should I best uh, fix this? Would this work for you? Would that work for you? And uh, doing that on Wiki would take a bit longer, I guess, because um, in a real time chat, it's just more useful. Um, one thing I mentioned, which is maybe a bit mean here, um, so when you create a tool, you use this interface called Tools Admin, or what's it called, Striker, I think. And uh, you say there, I want to create a tool with this name, and then it generates a bunch of things for you. And one of the things it can generate for you is a source code repository in this thing called Diffusion, which is part of, Wiki, of the fabricator of Wikimedia. And so you can host your source code there if you want. And then it's part of the Wikimedia servers. It's part of the Wikimedia privacy policy, which is uh, nice and everything. And I use that as well. Uh, so if someone really, really hates GitHub, then I don't want to force them to use it. And that's why I put my tools on Diffusion as well. However, under no circumstance should you use Diffusion for accepting code from other people or doing code review. Um, because it does that and it is absolutely terrible and I can only uh, recommend that you avoid it because it's really hard to figure out. Practically no one else uses it, so the people who want to contribute to your tool won't know how to use this either. Um, so if you want people to contribute to your code and send a pull requests or something, then ideally tell them to do it somewhere else, anywhere else, because Diffusion is just terrible for this and it's kind of a shame that tools admin encourages it but uh, i guess within a few years it sounds like we will be moving to gitlab at wikimedia and then presumably you will be able to host your tools on gitlab as well uh, also one thing i've started noticing is that the more tools you create the more work it takes to maintain them like if a new python version is available on toolfort and i have to update all the tools to use that python version if they make some big change like to the wiki replica databases that happened recently and was discussed on the cloud mailing list you have to update all your tools and you have to watch out that this um, doesn't grow out of a scale where you can't keep up with it anymore um, but you can get other people to help you with their tools or with your tools, and that can also be very useful. And finally, I guess to answer the question of how um, I measure impact for my tools, if they make edits through OAuth, then I can look at the special tags page and then it will tell me um, this and this many edits were made with that tag from that OAuth consumer, so I can know that however many thousands or in some cases millions of edits were made on some wikis through quick categories or some other tools. And you can also look at what people are doing right now uh, by looking for that tag on special recent changes. Uh, and that is already all the slides I prepared, but I saw at least one question in the chat. How is the developer community on wiki? How is maintenance and documentation organized? Sorry, my headset decided to turn itself off. How is maintenance and documentation organized? Um, I'm not sure how much developer community there is on Wiki, really. I think a lot of interactions I have with other developers is more, so if it's about the tools, then it's a lot of it on Telegram or uh, sometimes Twitter as well. Um, for documentation, there is a lot of documentation on the wiki called Wikitech, which is wikitech.wikimedia.org, I think. And that's kind of the all kinds of technical documentation, both about Wikimedia in production. So that will tell you about the SQL servers and caches we have, which are only interesting if you work at the WMF pretty much, but also about this um, cloud services platform, including Toolforge. Um, so a lot of documentation about Wikimedia Toolforge, how you can build tools, including uh, this thing I mentioned here, this My First Flask OAuth tool that's on uh, Wikitech as well, and not on MediaWiki.org, which you have maybe seen already. So Wiki MediaWiki.org is for MediaWiki things in general, and 
uh, all the toolforge things are etech instead including this guide so this is about flask uh, which means um, it's a tool written in python but there's also a pretty similar guide i think my first node js oauth tool for javascript and i think a few others as well but i don't remember hope that helps uh the image positions tool um not sure how to answer that uh it would help if i could maybe try it out on the screen but i would need an example item first maybe we can say um can you still see the screen yes it looks like it so let's go to the sandbox item and prepare that for a second it already has an image um okay so we can actually use that positions item so here we are editing the uh, i hope that's big enough maybe a bit bigger uh, so the item is wikidata sandbox because i don't want to make real edits and it has this photo bronze ornamental staff head and it doesn't really have any depicted statements at the moment let me see if i can add some and let's say this depicts i don't know let's call this here stone i don't know what it is it's some random image um, but let's say it depicts stone a rock or artificial rock-like material add this as a depicted statement um okay then if we go to the item we should be able to see it here actually yep depicts stone so that is the statement that was just added through the tool and now i can add a region and it will um create this uh, interface which is the same library as in the crop tool if you've ever used that for wikimedia commons same way you can draw a rectangle somewhere and then drag it around so let's say roughly here is the stone in the image scroll down use this region and then it will make the edit in the background and if we go back to the item reload it then we should see this qualifier relative position within the image uh, rounded to some decimal places so that's what the tool does and then if i reload the page um, then it acts as a viewer and we see this thing that i just added and you could add as many regions as you want in this way um i guess until the item blows up but i'm sure there are uh do i have it here as a placeholder no that i don't think that's the right one okay it's also a decent example william brooke 10th lord copham and his family with his wife and presumably loads of children it has some fruit plate stemware a parrot loads of depicted things in this image uh, the coronation of napoleon was the other one i was thinking of but i'm not sure if that's that's the one that also is um i guess famous painting with loads and loads of people depicted on it uh, so you can see napoleon himself here with a laurel wreath with a crown uh there's i guess this uh josephine de bohanet or something is going to be his empress i don't know french history um but loads and loads of statements here and all of these if i remember correctly all of these already existed and uh, then being able to see them in the tool was actually pretty uh nice because before it was just this really long list of qualifiers uh, with these qualifiers of, it, of statements with the qualifier region region blah blah blah, blah uh, which is as i said almost unusable and now in the tool you can actually see it okay If we don't have any questions for now, I think I'll continue. Okay. Okay. No questions. Uh, we can uh, 
um, ask questions uh, again in the end. Okay. So, um, in the context of this Wikidata Lab, uh, this um, organization of the Wikidata Lab with the Museo Paulista, uh, I wanted to present uh, also some tools that were uh, built in the, this partnership. Um, these applications are called Wiki Museo do Ipiranga, um, uh, metadata apps, and are part of the Novo Museo do Ipiranga project. Uh, so it's a partnership we started last year, um, building two uh, applications, and then we um, uh, extended this uh, this project to build four tools this uh, year. We are already built two. Uh, we are finishing the second uh, two of this year. And these tools uh, also follows the my first uh, Flask OAuth two tutorial. I'm, I'm originally a Django uh, programmer. So I first tried uh, to build the application using Django then I, it was too complicated. And then I, I started looking for other tools that did what I was trying to do. And I came uh, with this uh, tutorial of Flask, and then I was introduced to Flask, and then I fell in love. It's very simple, it's very um, intuitive, to build uh, your code. <clears throat> uh, uses These applications also uses the OAuth protocol that it's part of the tutorial and use both the MediaWiki API and the Sparkle uh, queries on the Wikidata query service. So on the left, on the right, uh, we have uh, a screenshot of the of a functions, some functions uh, on the source code that allow us to uh, query the the Wikidata query service, uh, query Wikidata. Uh, we define functions to make this request to the to the Wikidata query service and return uh, return. Uh, to us, the res uh, the results uh, as a JSON in, in a JSON format. Then we grab this these results and we uh, read the JSON. So it's basically reading the JSON that was uh, requested was resulted from the request of a query. And this is a query we are uh, have been. Uh, doing since Wikidata Lab 2, I think. So this is a, a this is the kind of knowledge that will be is always building up. So we can uh, use it and reuse it in other formats, in other tools, in other uh, things that we build. This time, uh, last year, we started with this new realm of uh, knowledge that is the applications. Uh, it's an, a, a new project for me, uh, at least. Um, and then I had, I, I was following the Flask OAuth uh, 2 tutorial, and I was also studying the MediaWiki API and how, how I, uh, because the how how can I can I make an, an edit on an item on Wikidata without uh, depending on other tools? For example, the quick statements. So if I if I build a tool that depends on quick statements, then the person editing the user will 
have to log in in my uh, tool, then log in in uh, Quick Statements tool to upload an, uh, an edit. So um, the way that I found was through the MediaWiki API. We have the MediaWiki, the MediaWiki API has uh, functions to grab data, to you ask the entity data of uh, or properties or qualifiers, and you have all these in JSON format as well. But you also have functions to post data. So I want to make a new uh, statement on a, on a, an item on Wikidata. Uh, I have a function for that. I want to um, create or modify uh, a qualifier statement. Then I I have the ways to do that by the MediaWiki API. All this uh, code is also reused. I, I he reuse my code a lot between these applications because they are um, in the the base is the same. So you have uh, all the works or objects of the collection. I want to present them in some way, and when I present them in, in categories, the user see sees um, uh, a, a batch of images of these objects or works of art, then use the user the user um, chooses which image uh, they will be um, contributing to. Then once you are in the in the image uh, or the work or object uh, page, you have uh, a lot of information, uh, metadata, and then uh, in this page is where the code differentiates for each uh, application. So until I reach the object page on these tools, all the code is basically the same, changing names and categories chosen or queries. I will show some, uh, not some, all of them, of the four uh, applications built so far. And we uh, will go to the practical activities planning. So the first two was launched in March 2020. Um, it was my first uh, tool built. It's called How Many, or in Portuguese, Quantos Tem? First was called Povo Conta, then we changed the name to build a uh, um, visual identity for all the tools. So the first uh, is called Wiki Museu de Piranga, is the series of apps. And the first is How Many, launched in March 2020. And it invites Wikimedia users to count the elements depicted in the works uh, of the collection of the Museu Paulista. So in this image, for example, we have a woman and a horse. Uh, I think the, the name of the, the work is woman and horse posing for a photo. So, uh, and we have the descriptors for, it, uh, for this image um, placed in a form, on, on a form. So we have a horse and we have a woman. And the users, the user uh, choose uh, how many accounts, how many items of this type, or in this case, horse, how many horses there are in this picture, how many women are in this picture. So uh, they change the number, they add the number, and then confirm this information goes to the item and to, to the item on Wikidata as a qualifier uh, quantity, uh, E1114, uh, to the descriptors. So this is a, these are descriptors, P180, uh, and we add qualifiers to these uh, descriptors. These descriptors are 
given by the Museu Paulista. So one, when we uploaded the images and the metadata for this, uh, these items of the collection, we uh, gathered all the, the work, we gathered all the possible uh, items, all the uh, descriptors that the museum was already doing uh, the museum has this information on their database uh, what this image depicts. So we built uh, uh, lexicons to help us find. Uh, so in the that database of the museum, the uh, horse is called cavalo in Portuguese. So cavalo is the key ID of horse. So we made this connection, this lexicon connection. And then we, once we upload the items, we uploaded this information as well. So this is a rich information that the museum has. Um, and we brought to the Wikidata uh, item of this image, of this, this work, and users can contribute to the work that the museum is, um, already doing for ages. The second uh, tool that I want to mention is the what clothes should I, should I wear uh, is the second application launched in August 2020. So a, a few months to learn how to do better code and to how, how do I how do I build a code that is replicable? So when we ended um, in the building of these two, this what clothes should I wear? Uh, we are, were already planning to build more applications. So I thought I need to uh, make this like a, a production line. So I have the base code and I want to add some functions, some background functions to uh, add not not the quantity, not a qualifier to the P180, but now I want to add or the P3828 or the 2283 to these descriptors. And then if I want to not add qualifiers, I want to add statements for the items, I need to have a base code and, a, and something that I, I can work to modify it. So the first two is green, the second two is blue. And this tool invites users to describe clothes and accessories being worn or used, in the case of accessor, accessories, by the people depicted. So uh, in the first two, we have horse and woman, and we want to count how many of them there are in the picture. Here, I know that is the there are uh, woman, a woman, uh, a human figure in this picture. And I want to know what does she wear? So she wear a boot and a jumpsuit. And maybe the, the yeah, jumpsuit. I, I can't uh, uh, make a zoom of this image, but she's using one piece that I call jumpsuit. Um, and I think it's the name. And she uses, in this outfit, she uses a sunglass and a belt. So this is the information that we don't have um, always for all the human figures in the museum metadata. Sometimes we have, but uh, in this case, we didn't uh, have this information on Wikidata. And now by the collaborative uh, work, the user can uh, uh, a user can you can add this information to qualify to enrich the P one hundred eighty um, of this uh, work? Other uh, other tools have links. Uh, I'll be posting the the page of the links in the practical activities. The third application is the first application 
that we built this year it was launched uh, last month in March 2021 uh, and invites Wikimedia users to identify the brands of the objects. So not the brands depicted, but the brands of the object. Uh, the first two um, applications were uh, brought to all the, the collection items. These uh, next tools are focused on the objects. So this is a paleto, is a, a blazer, like a blazer, and uh, it has all the images that the museum provided, and one of these images has the tag uh, photo. So we know this um, this clothes is um, of this mark, Vinetch, and we have a button when we don't have the, the brand de uh, declared. We have a button add uh, brand. We click, we open a, a model, uh, a box on the front page, and we search for the Wikidata item for this brand. And if we uh, find this metadata item, the, this Wikidata item, we declare, uh, we choose um, to add the statement. We add the statement and then the statement turns blue. This object is of the brand Vinetch. Uh, and adds the property inscription, P1689-84, uh, when, let's say, I, I searched Wikidata and I didn't find Vinetch, and then I um, I know this is the the brand of the cloud, but not all brands have a, a Wikidata item. So what I uh, what I do is to add the property inscription with qualifiers to define that this is a brand. Uh, this inscription is related to the brand. So it's the, the modeling of the data that we uh, built. Or I had the brand property, 1716. <clears throat> and the last, um, the last tool that I want to mention of the, the Wikimuseo uh, do Piranga apps is this one. This one is, is still uh, being built. Uh, is the what is depicted? Uh, we have uh, a tool in the community in the Wikimedia community called Wade <clears throat> that does uh, a similar uh, job to add uh, items that are depicted in the in the work in the image. So here we are not uh, trying to identify what is depicted in the image. This is uh, this image is about a vase. So in the way that we would uh, add the pig's vase. Here we are trying to identify the motives. The in visual arts is the, the uh, a pattern, uh, a drawing in the in the object uh, to that is, uh, they identify the, the motive of this object. This is a vase, but uh, has peafowl. Um, uh, okay, this is the name in English. Adds a, there's a drawing of a peafowl and have, has flowers and in the, in the vase itself, a part of the vase are two dragons. So you hold the vase by these two handles, I think, and they in, are in the format of uh, dragons. So all these these figures are motives of this uh, object. And adds the property depicts uh, P1A to the items uh, of the collection. What's next? So the, uh, as I mentioned, we are planning to do four um, applications for the Wikimuseo de Ipiranga uh, set of uh, applications. The next, uh, so we have two applications 
uh, the next uh, application, if I'm not wrong, is um, for people to add images to Wikimedia Commons. So they uh, of add uh, images to Wikimedia Commons to of uh, objects that are similar uh, to the ones in the museum collection. Let's say I have a vase of the same brand uh, of the same time, some time period, and I I have this vase in my 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 home, and then I. I I'll take a picture of the vase and post it uh, on Wikimedia and, and upload to Wikimedia Commons with a free uh, CC BY license. And this image could uh, you be used um, in other projects in everywhere. So I think this is the, the, the next one. And the last one is uh, to users identify how um, how do this uh, object works? So this um, this iron to to press clothes uh, is used uh, is used uh, with electric electricity, or is uh, uses uh, coal or something like that. This is the 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 set the two these are the two uh, tools that we are planning. This could change. Uh, this is um, these are tools that we um, ask the museum and we 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 have uh, meetings with the the museum uh, s uh, research team to help define what is the necessity. So. Um, I'm not building these uh, tools for myself, I'm building for the museum. So the museum can, um, uh, so the museum can have the help of um, people that are interested in, in adding this information or helping enrich the metadata of the museum can uh, have a, a easy way to do this job. So uh, you don't have to be a researcher, uh, in the Museo Paulista, but you you can contribute in some way by adding this information and reaching the data that will be curated at the museum. So they can uh, bring this information back to the institution. And at uh, last, we are going to do some practical, uh, practical activities this afternoon. Uh, these activities are very simple. We will be using the tools mentioned and report any bug, hopefully none will be, will be found, and suggest uh, new features, features in the proper pages. Uh, GitHub, tool page, the messages on Wiki, email, Twitter, uh, Facebook, anything that you can find. Um, the, the tool provides, uh, uh, you can use to report uh, a bug, for example. I use uh, a lot of GitHub, so I always encourage people to uh, upload their issues, their, their bugs on GitHub, but because it's a uh, easier way to find me. But uh, other, um, me, uh, other, Platforms are, can be used to report bugs. So we have uh, three uh, three tools that I, I, I grabbed from Lucas and my presentation. All of these are in, in the slides and the presentation. We can go back and get, grab the link. I think Erica is posting them on the on the comments as well. And I think that's it. That's my last, last slide. I think we can um, work on the questions now. Should we start with the most, with the earliest ones or? 
Yeah, that was the first one, I think. Uh, I don't know that much about Triple IF actually. Um, what I definitely know is if uh, the Wikidata image positions tool is used on like an item for a painting or so on, then you might have images or photographs of different resolutions of that painting, and that's why it uses a percentage in the structured data and not uh, fixed pixel positions. Um, because the assumption is that even if you have a higher resolution photo of the same painting, um, it's still going to be the same case that uh, Napoleon starts at like 60% from the left or whatever. I don't know that much about other kinds of transpositions, except that I assume if it's all using the IIIF standard, then you can get the initial positions out of the Wikidata image positions tool and then use something else to transpose it, I guess. But uh, beyond that, I'm not sure. Why is the Museum de, Museo de Peranga doing this? What do they get from this? So um, not only the Museo de Peranga, but there is a, 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 a lot of uh, institu GLAM institutions that are doing this, uh, releasing their metadata and images uh, into the Wikimedia projects. And what they get back from this is um, So is when um, a user make a contribution, this user is a interested user in the this topic of the co that collection or a specialist on this topic, the topic of the, the the works that of the collection of the museum, the museum, the museum, and uh, this user uh, make a contribution. This contribution uh, would maybe not uh, be made by the museum staff because they have all the collection to to care about. <laughs> and people, uh, let's say, I only like vases. I'm a specialist in, in vases and different vases of museums. So I can make a contribution about the, the vases of the Museo Paulista without, uh, without having to, to be part of the museum. The, of the museum. So the museum had, grabs the information, can grab the information uh, enriched on the Wikimedia projects because they are CC0 in Wikidata and CC by on or public domain on Wikimedia Commons, and the museum, museum can uh, grab this information and create uh, this information. So let's see if this, this information is accurate uh, and then accept or deny the information of the Wikimedia uh, users. So the museum get uh, enriched data. Uh, that's the where's property. Um, it says uh, where's property. Okay. As qualifier, not as a statement, even if the picture is a portrait. Yes. Because uh, we are, with this statement, we are adding information about someone depicted in the, the portrait or in the photograph or in, the, in the, the work. So we are not adding information about the work uh, itself, but of uh, information about the people depicted. So if I have a, a portrait of Dom Pedro I, uh, then I, I, I will be adding information about him not about the, the 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 work that is depicted the, the painting for example is the data modeling open to other glam projects use as a starting point 
So the data modeling, uh, the item on Wikidata about uh, the work of the Museo Paulista is as uh, common as the other institutions. The only thing is the collection uh, being Coleção Museo Paulista or Museo Paulista collection. So the, the source code of the applications are built to only um, show the categories of the Museo, do pa Museo Paulista, but you can uh, also use um, through the URL, you can uh, paste the key ID of an, another museum uh, work, and then you can add information there as well. So uh, the source code, the, the thing that it needs to change is only the queries. The source code can be uh, reproduced for other institutions or not, not any institution. You can uh, remove the line of the query that says grab uh, categories of works of art of this institution. You can eliminate this line, this code line. Uh, maybe I can share my screen for that one. So to find existing tool for each tools, I guess uh, one thing is what I already mentioned to track the impact of one tool, but you can also use it to find other tools. The special tags tells you which uh, tools or other things have been used to make the most changes. Uh, quick statements is near the top. Um, this I think is recent changes, right? For drilling, Wiki Open Refine is a great tool and so on. And then there's also the Wikidata tools page um which can get maybe a bit overwhelming um, but that also has loads of useful tools and apart from that i guess if you see on your watch list or in the history of some item that a specific tool was used by someone else then you can um maybe go look for that tool or maybe there's a link in the edit summary already and then use that to find existing tools like Wikidata, like Seam Forms, for instance, puts itself into all the edit summaries so you can follow the link and then use this rule yourself, hopefully. Um, tools can use PHP or any other programming language you want. I think PHP is pretty popular. I like uh, to use Python. Uh, because this Flask framework is really great. Um, there's some documentation on Wikitech, I think, for writing tools in Java. A few people are experimenting with Rust as well. Um, so there are a lot of different options. Yeah. I also use Python because uh, for it is my... Uh, mother language <laughs> for for computing so um, but i think there is a lot of uh, tools built in php uh, i think one great example is the quick statements tool uh, magnus uh, built is uh, written in php i think all of them are in php of all of magnus tools yeah i think so yeah. as well is there a link to the tags page? Uh, I just put it in the private chat. I don't think I'm logged into StreamYard, so I'm not allowed to post comments to the public okay. chat, but maybe you can uh, copy you that go. over. Post. Yes. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. There it is. I think we, if, if we don't have any more questions, I think we can uh, finish, wrap it. Let me see. And join us, uh, everyone watching, uh, can join us in the Google Meet uh, link. You can send uh, an email to eventus uh, at WMBMNO brazil.org this email that is showing on the screen 
and you can uh, you will receive a link for the Google Meet. So we can um, work and ask. Uh, you can ask questions and uh, I'll try to answer them on this afternoon uh, when we will be testing the tools. Uh, use it uh, that I mentioned. All these these links will also be shortly in the the page of the event. So the links of, of the uh, practical activities. I think that's it. Thank you, Lucas, so much for doing this. <laughs> it's a, 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 a pleasure to meet you and a great uh, contribution to to the Wikidata Lab. All right, great. Thank you. <laughs>